Hey dragons, I have a new game for you guys to check out. I think you're gonna love it. It's called Shadows in the Forest. It is an awesome game, but I will advise you now, it's a little complicated to set up and to learn how to play. Once you're playing though, it makes total sense. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is your board, which unfolds. And you'll notice that it has all these different spaces See all these different like pockets of space for you to put things. You'll also notice that you've got all different, we call them hiding spaces, all different hiding spaces. Some are trees, some are rocks, they're all different kinds. What you're going to do is you're going to take each of the halves of the hiding space, you can see they match, you slot them together like this, and then you're going to set them up on your board. The trick here is that the hiding places cannot be touching the path in any way. So if you have a tree that's like part way on the path, maybe move it to a bigger spot where it'll fit better. Does that make sense? Okay, once you've got them all set up, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to decide who's going to play as the lantern and who's going to play on the Shadowling team. This is kind of like when you're playing hide and seek, you decide who's it first. Um, the position that's kind of like being it in hide and seek is playing as the lantern. It is quite a challenge. Um, so if you are super, super competitive, maybe don't volunteer to be the lantern on your very first try, maybe be part of the shadowing team first if you're super competitive. Um, but go ahead and pause the video now, decide who's going to be the lantern team and who's going to be on the shadowing team. Okay, I'm gonna assume you've decided now. This is the lantern piece. Makes sense, because it looks like a lantern. You'll notice that on the top, it's got a little arrow. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is. That arrow tells you what direction the lantern is moving. You need to place the lantern on one of the red stones in the corners of the board. Whichever spot the lantern person wants, but that little arrow needs to point in the direction you're gonna go first. So if you're gonna go along the side of the board, you need to point it in that direction first. Okay, now in a second but not yet, we're gonna turn off the lights so the shadowlings can start their turns. But before we do, each little shadowling figure needs to get a mask put on. Now, you need to have at least as many shadowlings as you have players, but if you don't want to use all six, you don't have to. Using all six makes the game harder. So, decide if you really want to play a hard game or if you want to play an easier game. Once you've got all the little masks on, you're going to put each shadowling in a different hiding spot. Now, I know that on a hiding spot, there are four sides, but this all still counts as one hiding spot because it's one tree. Okay, so different shadowing at each different spot, whichever ones you want. But don't do that until the lantern person has closed their eyes. Okay, once you have got all of your shadowlings in their spots, then your substitute will go and turn off the lights in the hall and turn off the lights in the room. Okay, 
Don't do that yet because we need to finish getting our instructions first. Because once that's done, we're going to start playing. So there's a switch on the bottom of your lantern that you will turn on. You can see now it lights up. We will be playing this game completely in the dark. Yes, you heard me, in the dark. Because this is a game that works on how light moves. It can go in any direction, but it can't go through things. You'll notice once we turn off the lights that your lantern is casting shadows based on those hiding spots. Here's how it's gonna work. The lantern gets the first part of the turn. They roll these glow-in-the-dark dice, and whatever number it says, that's how many spaces you move. But you can only move in the direction the arrow on top of your lantern is pointing. So I rolled a three, so I'm going to move three spaces. Now, in the direction I was going, I hit a brown stone. Let me show you. I started here. I went one, two, and hit a brown stone. Now, I can keep going this direction and go one more, or because I'm on a brown stone, I can change directions and go this way one. See how that works? All right, perfect. Now, if I had rolled a one on my very first turn, I would be able to move one and then roll again. But that only counts on my very first roll of each turn. Now, once I've moved my spaces, the lantern's turn is over. At that point, the lantern person closes their eyes and it's the shadowling turn. This works a little differently. The shadowling team doesn't have to roll dice and they can move wherever they want, but their shadowlings have to be in contact with the board at all times. They have to slide them around. And here's the catch. If at any point during the lantern turn or the shadowling turn, the light from the lantern hits one of the shadowlings, that shadowling is frozen. So, for example, if I have a shadowling here behind this tree and I move him around, he's in the light of the lantern. He's immediately frozen. He loses his mask and has to stay in that spot. No moving. So the lantern's goal by the end of the game is to freeze all the shadowlings. The shadowling goal by the end of the game is to get all the shadowlings in one hiding spot, so grouped around one tree. Now, if a shadowling is frozen, there is a way to unfreeze them. How it works is you get a second shadowling into the same hiding spot. And if they can go a full turn, so that's into the lantern's turn and back into the shadowling turn and the lantern hasn't frozen the new shadowling, they're unfrozen. They get their mask back and they can move again. Does that make sense? The shadowling team is a team. So it's not I'm moving my piece and you're moving your piece. It's whoever can reach whatever piece is sliding them around the board. They tell the lantern when their turn is over and then the lantern person can open their eyes again. Now, you want to make sure that your shadowlings are really well hidden, because if they can see where your shadowling is on the board, they can go get it. So be very, very careful about where you place your shadowlings. I think you guys are really going to love this game. You can play as many, one, as many rounds as you want. Um, remember, it's an honor system. If your shadowling touches the light from the lantern at all, any part of your shadowling, it's frozen no matter if it's the lantern's turn or the shadowling turn. That mask then comes off and goes in front of the lantern person so they can see how many shadowlings they've frozen. I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, it is one of my favorite games to play with my husband. We have a great time with this game. I hope you guys will enjoy it too. I love you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.